So it's awesome to be here. Oh, yeah. Um, it's awesome to be here in person in North America, getting to talk about Knative at KubeCon, at our own, very own KnativeCon. And um, since I'm kicking this off today, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the past and a lot about the future. So um, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm a software engineer at VMware, but I'm also one of the people who started the project at Google um, many years ago. And so I've got a little history of what's gone before. And speaking of um, history, Red Hat was the very first company outside of Google that we ever showed what would become Knative 2 before it actually had that name. And they've been a great partner and sponsor on this project for getting close to five years now. And they've sponsored this conference that we're all here at. So. Thank you very much. Um, and so I told you that we would start with a little history. Um, back when we came out in 2018, um, there were three pieces of Knative. There was serving, eventing, and build. Um, these were the three things that we thought people struggled with when they were trying to adopt Kubernetes. How do I get myself a container? How do I run a container easily? How do I connect that container to other stuff that's going on? Um, Fast forward a couple years, and it turns out that how do I build a container actually is a bigger, harder problem that ties into how do I build anything? And so Build grew up, went off to live with the Continuous Delivery Foundation as Tecton. Um, and Knative had two pieces, serving and eventing. Um, until earlier this year, where when um, Lance Ball and um, some of the folks from Red Hat came in to the community and offered to donate um, a project that would become Functions. And we've recently incorporated Functions into Core. And what does that mean? What, what is a Core Knative project versus a Sandbox Knative project? And the names are kind of funny because we've had Istio as a supporting piece of Knative since day one, but that lives in sandbox. So why does functions live in core? Well, the last time we tried doing this, um, before a global pandemic disrupted our plan to do functions, 20, and we spent a lot of time when that failed talking about, okay, what does it look like? What are the rules for getting something into core? And we came up with these five guidelines. So functions a little bit in terms of how it meets or doesn't meet these. So. Um, we it definitely has developed. Um, do you want me to switch to the wired? Okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's all developer facing. That's awesome. Independent usability. So when we started, we said, look, you can each, use each one of these pieces without needing other pieces. Um, they're each useful on their own. Uh, kind of a question mark there. Knative functions is mostly intended to deploy to Knative serving, but you could deploy to a um, Multiple underlying, yes, absolutely. If you wanted to build a Haskell function build pack, you absolutely. So. Absolute check mark there. Number and diversity of installations. We actually don't do a good job of tracking this in general, but um, both Red Hat and VMware have engaged with the project, and there's some early signs that this is a generally useful thing. Um, and the quality of the technical implementation. We get a thumbs up. The team's been working very hard to make sure that they are meeting all of our standard Knative quality gates that we established when we shipped V1. So. Um, and they've built on solid underlying infrastructure and implementations. So um, somewhere between three and five of these are a check mark now. We are headed in the direction where this feels like it should be part of core, and we wanted to recognize and signal that. So that's all. Got three. Um, but the Uh, 
and uh, a bunch of these are ideas that we don't do. Um, they're ideas for where the next thing could come from. So serving is basically automatic HTTP. You've got a web server. Um, let's just be able to grab it, whoop, and you've got as many web servers as you need. And you don't have to think about it. It does all the stuff for you correctly. Are there other models where we could make that, whoop, and you've got enough, um, you know, work? So for those of you who don't know, there is um, an Apache Flink project that is, um, that is basically one of the big stream processing platforms. And they have a mechanism called state fund where they assemble all the state for your application and then they ship it off externally. Could someone integrate Knative to that pretty easily? It feels like it. Coprocessors. Um, so none of these exist today, but it would be real nice if you could just say, hey, Envoy, I wanna do something more complex that I don't really know how to put into the Envoy configuration. Let me just call out to Knative and like, Maybe if you're a customer who spends more than $10,000, you get routed to a slightly different set of API endpoints or something like that. Um, it'd be really cool if you could do that with serving and you know, just plug in and make Envoy better. Or similar, similarly, if you have a database that scales out like Snowflake, um, it would be great if you could define your user functions in any language, run them on Knative, and have it call out. Um, Another big research area, I don't quite know where it fits in, WebAssembly. Um, people thought, hey, browsers do this great sandboxing and defense and so forth. Could we use this to run servers? Um, pros, it's got really fast startup times. Cons, the binary interface is completely different than Linux containers that we have today. Um, another place that would work well with serving that we don't do great instructions for today at least, API gateways. I don't know if it's a brand new thing. I don't know if it's, here's how to hold the existing thing better, but it'd be nice to get a flat API surface to customers and then break it out into a bunch of native services in the background. Um, with that, we're gonna talk a little bit about eventing and event-driven applications. Um, today, we mostly focus on routing the events to the right application, um, but there's some other patterns out there. We already saw stream processing. You'll see it says, Event stream ingress and event stream egress. Those are events. What does it look like to hook up eventing with stream processing? Uh, another place at the AWS ecosystem, they have these step functions, basically little state machines. And you can say, hey, my order goes through these steps. And then you can have 100,000 little state machines that only run and call off to your computation when there's some work they need to do. And so it would be really cool if we had something that you could try thing um, that did these little state machines. Um, on the so um, Knative serving makes it easy to scale up your capacity in a burst if you get a lot of work. But another thing you can do is you can shift things out over time, or you can say, hey, I need to do this in the future, but not right now. Um, so a a nice task queue would be a great complement to some of the existing mechanisms we have to say, you know, hey, deliver this, but deliver it in three hours. Or, you know, here's a place, do some work, but don't let more than 50 run at a time. We actually don't want you to scale up and, and we want you to wait for other times. And the last event pattern, broadcast. Um, broadcast is different from all these others because for all these others, we've got an event that we want to get to your application as a whole. And any one piece of the ad application can handle it. For broadcast, every single piece of the application needs to get that message. What's broadcast good for? Mostly cache and validations. There's probably some other cases, but mostly it's cache and validations, which is one of the two hard things in computer science. So um, this is new. new execution model. Um, one common pattern that you'll see that's the beginning of the MapReduce pattern is go over a table and for each row in the table run something. Now you can build that as two separate functions today, one that scans the table, fires off a bunch of events, and a second one 
that consumes each event and processes that row. But it would really, be really cool if you could actually make that a first class expression. Um, here's my scanner, and then here's my per row function, and get things to scan out horizontally. So durable functions is another um, cool thing. Okay. Um, is a cool thing that Azure has um, that, uh, that lets you basically build sort of continuations and save your state. So you run a little bit of execution, and then you sort of pause and you return, here's my state, and then you can pick up later, and you get all that state fed back into your application along with whatever that next event was, so you can continue. Great. Um, and then we talked about coprocessors. So I think it's a lot easier. Um, basically, here you go, you automatically know your, your signature and all of that stuff. Um, and so that's a big list of future stuff. Why is this room the right place to be doing it? Well, I think there's a couple of advantages that Knative has. We're open source, so like everybody can download and play with it. We've seen a whole bunch of academic institutions and so forth go along and like do some research and play with it and try sticking stuff together. We have an open community. I think this is actually the biggest part. We bring everyone in and we say, hey, you can. Um, and the last piece is we have an architecture where we have ability as a goal. So we want people to be able to run this, run Knative in production. We also want to enable people. And we don't want to break the production people with the experimenters, but we want to enable the experimenters. And so last thing before I go is to remind you, part of that open community is that we get to choose who's going to guide the community. And that means that we've got an upcoming steering committee election. If you've been contributing to the project, you're probably eligible to vote. Check at the site if you've got it. And if you know someone who would be a great steering committee candidate, or you would be a great steering committee candidate, sign up um, to run. Um, I forget if there's two or three seats up this year, but there's a couple seats up this year. These are the people who do all of our community building and our marketing and interaction with the CNCF and deal with a lot of our infrastructure needs. So critically important role, and any of you could be a steering committee member. So thank you very much, and I am over time. So I'm gonna clear off and let Nana yeah. introduce the next speaker. Thank you, Evan, that was amazing, thank you.